<laughs> responsibility there's a lot of responsibility when it comes to father yeah you have to adjust now you are a father means to me specifically someone who is caring Compassionate, uh, someone who's protective of their children, uh, someone who's not afraid to put a baby in a carrier at the mall. Um, yeah, someone who's present and works hard for their family. I was basically there as a, as a as a compass, not just a compass, but a moral compass to his offspring, to his kids. Um, and just basically being there as that sort of guidance, um, be that shining, you no, know, be that shining star for your child. Uh, I was part of the process when she was get, she was testing if she was pregnant or not. So there were speculations that she might be pregnant. I was shocked, uh, saying myself that everything will change. I'm going to be a father, financial wise, <laughs> I have to support. Yeah, it, I was shocked. Uh, so my wife had some suspicions uh, the week leading up to when we found out. She had uh, been experiencing a bit of nausea and uh, she was concerned that she hadn't you know, got my period. and. Uh, being a doctor myself, I was in denial. <laughs> so we, we, we thought like, oh, it's a week, we can wait and see what happens. But um, one day we were sitting down and uh, we went and got a test, took it home. And um, through the bathroom door, I, I hear someone shout, oh, my wife was shouting, what does the plus sign mean? <laughs> and uh, at that moment I knew, um, once the initial shock wore off, uh, we were very happy. We decided to go and get the baby something, so a pair of dungarees, and we then phoned our parents to let them know the good news. I vividly remember that day. It was actually during the, it was the evening, and sitting in a car, and then you are told that you are, yeah, you're pregnant. Um, the first reaction that came into me was shock, actually, because I'm like, wow, look at me, I'm about to become a father. And I remember, I think it took me about <clears throat> 20 to 30 minutes where I literally got out of the car and I sat on a cold tarmac and trying to process what had just so when like the news i just received it was like so surreal like you know you start to think wait is it like really you are about to become a father you know and it was a whole scary shock excitement just all in one going for the first scan um, the one actually that was to prove that oh yeah actually it's there the first thing that hits you I don't know how other fathers felt but for me the first thing that really got to me was the heartbeat that son you know like a normal heartbeat is boom 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 that one is like like it's so loud it's so fast and basically it brings that joy in you that really there is someone there and it was like such a great like a, a great moment and remember then going to all other scans um, and then there was this one time where for me 
I actually nearly cried. Um, we we're going to a scan, and then while they were busy doing the solo scan um, thing, my son then he just did this. It was the most like that thing really got me like I really wanted to cry because it felt like he understood that we were there and he just did this wow and then the day of the birth wow that was okay that was like one of the longest actually days ever because we were there from one day and then we had to well, I think we were there from the 26th of February and then he decided to come out at 14 minutes past 6 on the 27th it was okay a very surreal moment um because I was not allowed inside the theater um so then I had to be outside so I was waiting outside so we're waiting outside in the recovery room and then all of a sudden boom the nurses come running and they're like come 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 and you are just also going there and you're not realizing exactly like you're still trying to process he's here he's here you finally get to meet him and then i was told when as soon as i get to the nursery they're like take off your shirt um then they give me like a robe so you're gonna do the skin to skin and then you are handed your son and you feel the warmth and that heartbeat again and then this time funny enough he was not crying he was asleep and then it was there on my chest and without me realizing I was actually crying and they didn't actually notice that I was crying until his grandmother was like oh wow look at you you crying then I'm like oh wow didn't even notice because we spent a couple of time, like a long time, just together, him on my chest. Now just feeling warmth, just knowing that, wow, this is another life. And you're responsible for this life. That was, wow, that moment that really took me by storm. And I just, it was such a surreal moment. Just to see him move and cry, do all those things. Yeah, it was amazing. Pretty amazing. So I was able to attend most of the scans. Um, it was interesting because uh, I've, I've scanned pregnant women before. So I, I do know what a fetus looks like. Um, but it was different because now it's, you know, my wife's fetus. <laughs> uh, it was it was really special uh, watching the baby move, and well, later on, but seeing the baby's heartbeats earlier. Um, one perk of working in the emergency room is that you have your own scan, so we'd go and sometimes just, you know, check up on the baby, see how he was doing. Um, but each time was really special. Um, 3D scan was great. Got to actually see his face and his nose. And he looks like a generic baby, but uh, once he was born, we could see how the features fit together. Very cool. Um, my experience at the delivery was also very special. Um, I've experienced uh, childbirth. Well, I've been around when women are delivering babies. Haven't experienced it myself. Um, but it was different seeing someone you love, seeing my wife go through it. Uh, she was so strong. Um, they played a very supportive role, uh, which also, again, different when you're the doctor in charge and when you're the husband. And um, I guess it was, the time went by so quickly. Um, the 20 something hours of labor I felt we were just sort of experiencing moment to moment and then all of a sudden there was this third person there with us and um, I have 
that's just, just good memories. It's really special. I was never inside. <laughs> I was just dropping hair to the doctor. I've never gone inside with hair. Why? Because I was working, so hair scans were during the week. So we were working in this, uh, at the same company that time. So I have to go to work. And then she understood because the organization that we were working for was not allowing us to take too much leaves during the year. So uh, she was going along because this was during the week, during uh, working hours. I was there a night before, around eight. Then she told me that the doctor said uh, maybe she will give birth tomorrow or they don't know. So I've left. And then it was, I think it was five hours, to five hours after I've left, then the doctor came in to check on her. And then they did all those scans and everything. And then they found out that the baby's heart is dropping. So they made an emergency surgery for her. So I was, no, I was not there. And then you know, when you heard the news, like how was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, the news I heard after the baby was born, so I didn't mind it because the baby was healthy there, there was nothing wrong, so I didn't feel it that way. If I was there before she gave birth, I think I was going to panic, but I was there when the baby was born after the heartbeat and everything that they were explaining. What advice I'd give to new dads? Um, first of all, you know, read up about what it's like to have a baby. Um, don't don't be naive and don't like feign ignorance because you don't know how to do something. Watch a YouTube video. Apparently, you're watching this one. Um, learn how to change that nappy. Um, know what it's. Like small things to do around the house. Like maybe you're going to be playing a big supportive role. That's that's what it is, especially in the beginning. Um, most of the child care directly is going to be done by mom. So you're going to be playing a bit more of a supportive role. Um, you're going to need to help your wife or your partner out with whatever they need. Um, you're going to help them in whatever way they want. You're going to be their cheerleader, uh, as my wife tells me that I am for her. And um, to, you know, do the dishes, order food, or make it, depending, if you can. And um, I think one thing, though, you need to also remember is that initially in the beginning, it's going to kind of seem like your child doesn't like you. <laughs> and uh, don't, don't, I mean, that's completely normal. You. Baby's really worried about food, and mom is the one that provides that a lot of the time. So, as they develop and as they start to notice the world around them, they'll, they'll notice you. And uh, that bond comes in time. It's not necessarily there instantly. And um, just be there and be present. And I think that's, that's how that bond really develops. Right now, for me, I'm just saying, first of all, be emotionally prepared. Um, obviously nothing can really prepare, especially if you haven't been there before, nothing can prepare you for what's about to happen. For me, as I'm saying, just be emotionally be pre pre prepared that, okay, your life now is going to change for the better, because let me tell you, a child is a blessing. I don't care what people say, a child is a blessing, a child will change you for the better, and... Yo, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'll be emotionally available for the child. Do um, what what other advice can I give you? Is yeah, be pre actually yeah, the day, <laughs> the day of giving birth, be prepared that you could also be the useless person in that room. Basically, because you are called do this, do that, and for you, you just become clueless actually you know nothing because you're being pushed around and told to do this do this run here run here run here and then at the end of it they're like hey here's your baby and then 
all the thing everything just rushes back and be like wow it's like yeah but yeah basically that's it for me be emotionally prepared for what's about to come it's gonna be a very Alright, so yeah, it's not gonna be a rough ride. It's gonna be a very, really, it's gonna be an exciting ride. Just imagine being given a, yeah, a new car, a new sports car, or a new, whatever your favorite toy is. Um, remember that excitement. Now, when you get a child, get it like ten times that. Hmm. Be there, always, from the start until the time she gave. She must be successful more than me. That's what I want for her. Marriage. She can stay as daddy's daughter. <laughs> yeah. Would be that he grows up to be healthy and, and happy. And um, that whatever he does, he's a service to humanity. Um, that he puts, he's a you know positive influence on the world, and that he he uh, is a net good, I guess, for for humankind. Yeah, that would be like my greatest dream. Yeah. For for me, for my child currently and my future kids, obviously the number one thing is for them not to suffer, like. No one would like to see their child suffer or see them in hospital and coming to that one actually I remember we had a, at work we had a tour of um, the Red Cross Hospital. It actually nearly brought tears to my eyes when you see parents in bereavement rooms crying because their child just passed away. Or their child is sick in hospital for me that is one side I don't actually ever want to see especially for my children I'd like to see them succeed one day um, basically I don't want them to be spoiled um, but I want them to have some sort of a comfortable life um, because I I brought them here so first of all, it's my it's my responsibility to make sure that that process is smooth, guide them with all the knowledge that I currently have. And just make sure that for me, actually, I'm the best father they could ever wish for, they could ever have. Um, just be there for them. In fact, for me, my biggest dream is to be, you know, that annoying father who's always there. That's basically my biggest dream for me. Wherever they are, I am there. Especially if you know, one day, if I have a daughter, be there for her. Um, you know, play with them, do funny things with them during sports days. Just go there and be, yeah, that embarrassing parent who's like shouting their names and screaming so hard. And also, again, in terms of when they fail, I, I want to be the person who's like, hey, look here, failure is good. Failure is part of life. Actually, that's how we learn. And show them actually failure doesn't mean that it's the end of life. This is life. People make mistakes, but it's how we get out. We learn from those mistakes and move on and learn from them. So, yeah, basically, that's basically my wish for me for my kids is to make sure get them out there oh man mom is my son